Jay and Silent Bob reboot had a fraught, you know, journey to the screen. Um, it, it was uh, started life as Clerks Three, and we didn't get to make Clerks Three. And then I was like, wait, I'm gonna pivot and make Mallrats Two. And then we didn't get to make Mallrats Two. And then I was like, why am I banging my head up against the wall? I don't own Clerks and Mallrats, so I'm kind of at the mercy of others for that. Jay and Silent Bob, I do own. What? It's not like cheating. Justice blew up. So I was like, well, let's just make a Jay and Silent Bob movie. The other guy is always like, let's make a Jay and Silent Bob movie. And I'm like, we've done, I can't believe we did it once. Like, be happy it already happened and stuff. But we've been podcasting live in front of audiences around the world now for 10 years doing Jay and Silent Bob Get Old. And, you know, every one of those shows, and you're talking about shows that range from 200 people to 3,000 people, people are like, do another movie. And you're like, I don't know, you can't fight City Hall at a certain point, particularly when I, you know, it was clear I wanted to play with my own characters, but I couldn't do it through the conventional routes. But suddenly I was like, oh, I could backdoor do it through Jay and Silent Bob, you know, and that sounds way dirtier than I meant it. So I started thinking about a Jay and Bob movie, and I was like, what would that be? And I said, oh, I got it. Like, reboots are huge right now, so nobody's making fun of reboots yet. Done, I'll take that. So the idea will be, if Jay and Silent Bob strike back, was Jay and Silent Bob finding out Hollywood's making a movie about him and they crossed the country to stop that movie from happening. Jay and Silent Bob Reboot would be completely different because I'd grown as a filmmaker over the course of nearly 20 years. So in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, Jay and Silent Bob find out that Hollywood is making a reboot of that old movie about them and then so they travel cross country to stop it all over again. It's the same f***ing movie. Like, it's just a movie that makes fun of sequels, remakes, and reboots while being all three at the same time. And I was really, I wanted to Gus Van Sant it. Do you remember when Gus Van Sant did Good Will Hunting? And he had all the credit in the world, movie credit, where they're like, you do anything you want. And Gus Van Sant was like, I want to remake Psycho. And there wasn't like the internet like it was now, but the internet was outraged because people were like, why could, how could you possibly remake Psycho? What the f is the internet? His valid point, I thought, was like, no, kids today don't watch black and white movies, which rolled a tear for the clerks guy. But uh, he was like, you know, it's a good idea, it's a good story. Why not bring it into the modern world? So I saw it as like, how awesome. This dude's like middle age and he's doing a film school experiment. This is the kind of thing you do when you're in film school. So it always impressed me. So there I was thinking about reboot and I was like, you, you could remake your own movie. Like you have a chance here, like the joke would be, just make it exactly the same. We're just all older because the idea of the reboot is like, hey, everybody just does it again because there's another buck to be made. So I was like, well, there's our plot. That's how it began life. For the first year and a half, Jane Silent Bob reboot was like meant to be a purely a joke movie, which makes sense because the first movie is a joke movie as well. Then I had a heart attack. Jane Silent Bob reboot took on this new meaning where I'm like, well, this is gonna be a cinematic gravestone, man. Like this has to represent everything I've ever learned or done. Like this movie ain't just as dopey comedy anymore. It's like my last film, I'm a big fan of uh, Tim Burton's Big Fish, not even the whole movie, the last 10 minutes. Last 10 minutes will destroy anyone emotionally. I don't care if you're a Nazi robot, you cannot cr not cry at that. It's like the end of Field of Dreams, right? The whole making of Jane Silent Bob reboot was like the last 10 minutes of Big Fish. Like I saw everybody I ever worked with and loved who meant something to me and stuff, and they all carried me through to the end of the movie. It was so damn beautiful. So the movie operates as like a masterpiece and not like it's a masterpiece. I'm not that good. But that's not truly the meaning of the term masterpiece. Masterpiece comes from a time when, you know, you would have an apprentice who worked, served under a master and stuff, whatever that field was, studying, learning everything that the master taught. And one day the apprentice would put forward the masterpiece, which was like, this is everything I've learned under your tutelage. Like, does it stand up to muster and stuff? So I was like, this will be the masterpiece. This is everything I've learned in 25 years of making movies. This is the 25 year anniversary of Clerks this year. So I was like, this will stand as everything that if the heart attack comes back, because my man had two heart attacks and the second one took him out and I have his heart apparently. If it comes back, then I'm ready this time. You know, I'll be laying on the table and I won't be like, oh my God, you gotta save me so I can make one more movie. Like, I'll be like, I'm good and that's that. Problem is, now if I keep living, everything I make has to have the same gravitas of like, this has to speak for everything of who I was while I lived in life. And right now I'm working on Masters of the Universe for Netflix, the He-Man cartoon. So I'm like, this has to stand for who I was as a person. People are like, bro, it's Skeletor. Like it can't mean what you want it to mean. Like, yes, it can. 
everything has taken on bigger significance since the heart attack. So while Jay and Silent Bob Reboot is a very funny movie, like it has to be that because it is a sequel to a comedy, we couldn't suddenly present them with King Lear, right? It has to be a comedy at heart. While it is funny, it's an incredibly emotional journey. Like if you've seen any one of those old movies, Clerks, Mallrats, Jay and Silent Bob, Strike Back, um, Chasing Amy, Dogma, and I went out of order for some reason. Um, it, the movie will hit you in the, where the kids call that section of the body as the feels. It's, it's like the best high school reunion you never went to in your entire life and stuff. But at the same time, it's a eulogy for a guy who's not quite dead yet, but expects to be dead any minute now. I think Jay and Son and Bob have like lasted for, for 25 years because I won't let it die. Like at the end of the day, most people move on. Like Keanu Reeves moved on from Bill and Ted and he's like revisiting now because he's like, hey, that'd be kooky. I never left Silent Bob, you know? I ain't stopped talking about Clerks since the moment Clerks happened. I only recently started adding new conversations where I used to just be like, I made Clerks. And they're like, I know, bro, I know. Now I'm like, I also had a heart attack. That's my new story and stuff. So I think it's because of me, I won't let it die, you know? Um, and there's a certain familiarity with the characters. like. People know a Jay in their lives. Like, oh, my brother's just like Jay, or my, my girlfriend's just like Jay, which is always a weird one to hear. It's like, your girlfriend's like Jay. Um, but I think that helps. I don't think anybody knows a Silent Bob. I never hear that. People are like, I know a guy just like Jay. But nobody ever goes, I know a guy just like Silent Bob, because I think you would report that guy. The dude who literally says nothing but could and stuff. My sister always maintains that, like, I stole that from my father. She's like, you stole Silent Bob from dad. He never really talked until he had something very funny or very insightful to say. And I was like, I don't think I did. I just needed a guy to stand next to Jason Mewes, and I knew Jason Mewes would not stop talking. Like, the reason I wanted to put him in a movie is I'd, I'd been friends with him for a few years at that point. Let's say we met in, like, 1988, and so we made Clerks in 1993. So I'd known him at that point for, like, five years and stuff. And then for years, I'd always been like, somebody should put you in a movie. You're really funny, man. Like, one day somebody should put you in a movie. I want to know... If if you're funny like outside of New Jersey, or maybe you're just Jersey funny and stuff. And then years later when I wanted to be a filmmaker after I saw Richard Linklater's Slacker, I said, oh, I'm gonna be the guy that puts you in a movie. I'm putting you in a movie. And, and so I added him into Clerks and I wrote the character of Jay based on who Jay was at that time in his life, and I, who he was from age 16 to 19. And so, you know, all the things he said, his little uh, sayings and whatnot, and I gave him the script, and I, first time for Clarkson, I said, what do you think? And he goes, I don't know if I can do this. I was like, it's you. Like, how could you not do it? He goes, well, right here, it says I say snoochie boochies. Why would I say that? I'm like, why do you say that in real life? Brody man, noochie noochies. And look at this shit, the mad fat chick killer. So I began with him as a secret weapon. And when Clerks came out, nobody really talked about Jay and Silent Bob. They'd mentioned me as like, and then the director also plays a character called Silent Bob. They talk about Dante and Randall, and, and of course the, the you know Cinderella story of like how this movie costs nothing. Nobody really talked about Jay and Silent Bob. So when we had Mallrats, first screening of Mallrats we ever had was San Diego Comic Con, at Horton Plaza. It's like 200, 300 people and stuff. And Clerks had gone home video shortly before that because when it was in theaters, it never played on more than 50 screens. It was a real like art house release, so like not everyone saw it. Home video gives everyone a chance to see it. We put, we show up on the screen in Mallrats for the first time at this one screening, and the audience went nuts. Like recognition is like, it's them. And I loved that, man, because I was like, what, they know us already? Like, oh Lord. And I thought like in that moment, I'm like, these characters are gonna be huge. Then Mallrats died. And so they didn't really take off. And then I kept sticking them in everything, you know? I mean, number one, it was because I love the characters. Um, I think Jay is funny, legit. American genius, like I've never met anybody like him. True one-off, true original. And at the same time, by my ex-girlfriend who was killed in a car explosion's monkey. Man, I don't know what the f you just said, little kid, but you special, man. Uh, but number two, if I cash Jay in movies, then he stops borrowing money from me for that period of time that he's in the movies and stuff, so he can earn on his own. So I kept bringing him back, and one day we aggregated to our own movie. Like after Dogma, you know, we have a bit part chasing Amy. But after Dogma, and we had a bunch of screen time, we were big characters, you know, we were at the New York Film Festival and, and the whole cast is up on stage afterwards. And Matt Damon goes, I don't even know why any of us bothered to show up. Jason Mewes stole the entire movie from under us. And he was right, and I was like, he's right. 
So the next movie, you know, we got a lot of religious flack for Dogma. I was like, I don't want to face any flack, man. I don't want to make a movie where people get unhappy. I just want to make a movie where everyone's happy and shit. So let's make a Jay and Silent Bob movie. So I took the characters and like gave them their own feature. And then after that, there's one more, Clerks 2, where their parts scaled back down again. They weren't the leads. Dante and Randall were the leads. But why people respond to them, I mean, they're easy to love. They respond to them because of Jason Mewes. And Jason Mewes is the heart of Jay and Silent Bob. He's the vocal one, obviously. And this is the guy that, like, he's got a million dollar heart. Nickel head, but a million dollar heart. And never read a bad comic book, never seen a bad TV show, never has a bad word to say about anybody. You know, at the end of the day, you, you could support a guy like that. Like, a guy like that is kind of like, oh, I like him. He's, you know, he's filthy, but like, you know, and inappropriate, but like, you know, he's nice. He's got, his intentions are pure.